that's a big deal. Hi everyone, we're the fifth grade uh, team A, uh, aka Red, White, and Brilliant. I, I, I did not learn. I did not encourage that. But that's okay. That's right. You are good because you're red, white, and brilliant. Yes. All right. So, uh, to help with history and to kind of get you know, more of the muscles of intelligence involved other than just reading and writing and arithmetic. We uh, decided to perform a little play for you and uh, they've been rehearsing and singing songs about history and they've been learning it in history class too. So hopefully this will all kind of sink into their brain and you know, when they're your age, they go, oh, I remember that song, Paul Revere. So we're hoping, we're hoping that happens. I hope they had fun doing it. They, they've been, they got better really quick. We were a little worried, but the last couple days they've been really improving. So I'm very excited about that. Uh, we've had a, a lot of help from uh, Wareham Cable TV, uh, Chris up there, and uh, Steve Reeves is not here right now. So give him a hand, he's a big help, Chris. It's a lot. It will be on TV on the Wareham Educational Channel, so that will be, was it 95 on? 95, uh, 97 Comcast, Verizon 28. 28 on Verizon, 97 Comcast. Huh? You now have TV stuff. When it goes up. Yay! Okay, everyone I don't give you a about date, car. I don't. Finding parts for 63 people is a lot of fun, but everyone, we, we, we did it. Uh, I want to thank the teachers for helping out, Ms. Gudritis, Ms. Tatro, Ms. Kelly, Ms. Joyce, and Ms. Tierney, who are not here. Oh, she's here, so we can thank her. And um, they've been a big help for Ms. DeVoe. So this hopefully uh, will teach us all about American history, and afterwards, of course, the big award show. We had really expensive statues that were like that big of gold, but someone stole them. So we're having to give you, uh, we'll, just, we'll just have to do with diplomas and whatever. Right? All right. Sorry. Yeah, are we ready yet? Yeah. All right, so we'll slowly start the setup. Uh, every room is performing, so you're gonna see a bunch of people moving around you, trying to ignore them. All right, come on up. Class properly, thank you, in order. And that is how Christopher Columbus got a pepperoni pizza from 1492. Honor ships another Pepsi on the Serenario. Thank you, James, for such an entertaining report. How long did you work on your history project? Uh, I did most of that lunch today. Hence the pizza idea? Yeah, can I eat it now? Sure, class, all of you have failed history this term. Aww. <laughs> Really? The report stated that the Pilgrims started a video game called Plymouth Rock Band and they had the first Hanukkah with the Indians. That's not fair. Really? The report stated that George Washington was the original lead singer for the band ACDC and that's where we get the term Washington DC. What's so important about American history anyway? American history teaches how our country was founded. We can learn from the achievements and mistakes of our past and create a better future for the world to come. Just like a person, a nation that does not learn from its mistakes is doomed to repeat them. Yes, Pat? Excuse me, Mr. Smarty Pants, I have yet to do our project. Fine, what did you do for your project? We built a time machine! Fine, show the class. What time period did you study? No, Mr. Smarty Pants, you made a real time machine. That's a science project, then. You get an F for history, too. <laughs> Please, Mr. Smarty Pants, we worked really hard on it. We use our sense theory of relatively small space guy from Tinnan. Fine, stop explaining it. If you can use it to teach this entire class about American history, I'll give everyone an A+. Plus. Well, you just pull the marker at a certain point on the timeline, press the button on top of it. What year are we at? We're still here in 2014, but if we call a name with some line of the year about 1000 CE, they'll come and talk to us. Only Native Americans were in America at that time. Wait, I know. The Vikings came to America around that time. Leif Erikson. 
<laughs> oh, Reed Odin's beard. What is this? Am I in Valhalla? Who are you? I am Lee Ferguson, and I discovered Vinland. He did not discover anything. Many Native Americans were already living here. However, he landed on North America 500 years before Columbus did. Personally, I think his trip was a waste of time. Really? I'm right here. Now move the, now move the marker to the year 1500 CE. Okay, Mr. Smarty Pants. Columbus, Cortez, and Pizarro. <laughs> Sorry guys, but could you state your names and why you're famous? I am Christopher Columbus. I proved the world was trying to land at China. I am Hernando Cortez, and I taught the Aztecs and claimed Mexico for Spain. I am Francisco Pizarro. I conquered the Inca and claimed Peru for Spain. You guys are brave. You amigos never gave up. Well, that is true, class. However, Christopher Columbus landed on America, not China, and he began slavery in America. You should be ashamed. Cortez slaughtered thousands of native Mexicans, including women and children. That is awful. Pizarro did the same. He asked the Sapanga to fill up an entire room with gold or he would kill him. And then what happened, Mr. Smarty Pants? The Sapa Inca filled up the room with gold and then Pizarro killed him anyway. That's low, dude. <laughs> Why do you do those mean things? Why? Some say we explore to better and can to help our fellow man. Some say we conquer to help bring God to hidden lands. Well, if you believe in that, you might as well believe in the Easter Bunny. There's only one reason we explore. What for? We're in it for the money. Money, money, money. Your soul is too old. Money, money, money. It's a spice to make it nice. Money, money, money. Less must be bought and sold. Call it fame, call it fortune. You may think it's funny. Ladies, can we explore? What for? We're in it for the money. We learned that Pizarro conquered the Inca and claimed Peru for Spain. Sleepyhead! What for? We're in it for the money, bet! Alright, let's send our guests home. Okay, Mr. Smarty Pants. Alright, in you go. Hey, I was here first! You're joking, I was here for 100 years before you silly Spaniard. Hey, I'm Italian! Stop pushing! Well, they're gone. Yes, but don't you feel something's wrong? Are you sure that your time machine is safe and has no side effects? No problem here, Miss. I mean, Mr. Smarty Pants. Well, if you say so, let's continue, shall we? Pat, go to the year 1620. Yes, Mr. Smarty Pants. John Carver. Who are you? I'm John Carver, a saint, and I'm the governor of the Plymouth Colony. A saint? You must be really holy. He is, however. John Carver was the first governor of the Pilgrims. They called themselves saints. Pat, now move the dial up gradually for about 150 years, and I'll call the men and women who founded the American colonies. John Winthrop. I found in Boston with the Puritans. Roger Williams. I left Boston and found the colony on Island. Amen. Anne Hutchinson. I left those strict Puritans and spoke up for religious freedom. Amen. William Penn. I took the county of Pennsylvania. Amen. <laughs> James Oglethorpe. Hey everyone, it's Oglethorpe. <laughs> <laughs> it is correctly pronounced Oglethorpe. 
for it. Thank you. I found the colony of Georgia with the blessing of good King George of England. We did um. Hey, I thought most of these guys came from Spain. No, our country grew out of the English colonies. At first, Spain was the leader of colonizing the Americas, but soon all of Europe followed. Countries like France, the Dutch, and England started colonies of their own. Did they slaughter lots of Native Americans too? Well, they took their land and fought wars against them. They just wanted money. Money? Nay, we came to worship God as we wanted to. Yes, religious freedom is how you settled in America. So you were Englishmen and free? Well, for a while they were. But then England and King George III wanted to exert his control again. Curtis set the dial for 1770. Yes, ma'am, for me, sir. Here's someone to explain. Sam Adams. What's going on here? It's a British trick. What does British mean? I'm confused. The British are the dogs of the earth. They think you go around taxing, controlling the world. Class, the British Empire is England's names for its combined colonies. England is the main part of Britain. They practically mean the same thing. Well, we don't want to be British anymore. We don't want any more kings. No taxation without representation. What is taxation without representation? That's when the government can make you pay money. But you don't get a vote on how your money is spent, or how the country is run. We'll be slaves to the king. Down with the king! Now quiet down, Sam Adams here. Get a lunch detention. Yes, sir. <laughs> Class, what have we learned? We learned that the Dean, that's a warning. No talking unless I call on you. Jada. We learned that the English founded 13 American colonies in America. That's a smarty for you. Chris. We learned that many came to religious freedom. That's, a, that's also a smarty. We learned that came to religious freedom. That's a lunch detention. Jada, we learned that the England no, we learned that King George fed England the colonists by taxing them and not giving people the right to vote. That's all another smarty for you. Sleepyhead for the money. <laughs> no, sleepyhead, that's a dum dum for you. <laughs> they came for religious freedom. However, you were not completely wrong. Many Englishmen came to America to make their fortune as well. Okay, class, let's hear it. No, no more kings!
I push other would-be colonies to stop whining and free themselves from England for good. Ben Franklin. I help John convince our colonial brothers to see the wisdom of our freedom from tyranny. I was more polite about it, too. John Hancock. I led the meetings and I was the first to sign the declaration. I signed a good and large, too. Thomas Jefferson. I wrote the paper that declared our independence. Class, does anyone know what that paper is called? The Declaration of Independence. Right. When was it signed? July 4th, 1776. Yes, and what holiday do we celebrate every July 4th? Independence Day! What famous patriot wrote the Declaration of Independence? Sleepyhead! Brady? Oh. oh! Not even close, buddy. Thomas Jefferson. Wake up! Let's have some fireworks! Oh, there's gonna be fireworks, fireworks on the 4th of July. Red, white, and blue, red, white, and blue fireworks that are driving in the sky.
We will be truth to be self-evident in the only of creating things. We are endowed by the Creator with unalienable rights. Now, mommy, is our life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness. If there's one thing that makes me happy, then you know that it is. Say goodbye to the politicians. Bye. Bye. They risked their lives signing that Declaration of Independence, but now they had to fight a war. A war. Ah. I'm scared. Ooh, me too. Black children have no fear. Call it mac and chips. Fresh will be Paul Revere. Yes, I woke up in Minutemen saying, the British are coming, the British are coming. The game's still at Emma Blue, sent his watch back, back to Boston running. Wait a minute, what's a Minuteman? That's a Patriot soldier who's ready to fight a minute's notice. What's a lobster bat guy? That's what they called the British soldiers. They wore a bright red coat, you see. Oh. Colonel Prescott! I bravely fought the British at Bunker Hill. We only had little ammunition, so I told our troops not to fire and waste bullets until the British were close enough so we could see the whites of their eyes. Now, children, get up from under your desk. There's no need to fear. General George Washington is here. Um, what does that mean? Sit down. Gentlemen, relax. What happened after Bunker Hill? Well, first we lost many battles. And then... Well... Okay. First we lost many battles. We won some small battles at Princeton and Trenton, but we were poor and had little ammunition to fight. Then we nearly froze and starved to death at, at Valley Forge. However, things did start to look brighter after we defeated the British in New York... in Saratoga, New York. Oh, that we were vastly out, but we were still vastly outnumbered. But finally, we trapped the British at Yorktown, Virginia, with the help of the French. Now, sing about it. <laughs> Thank you. 
there. Many bodies stepped up, hit and run. And you only got a vision, not the street. For the blood Washington and the French fleet. One was a surrender, and finally we had one. Three, three, We chartered around the world. It was the end of the revolution. The men of the men so hard it took the day. The father of our country beat the British there at Yorktown. If I were you, number two. I help lay the basic formation of our government. John Dickinson of Delaware. I was afraid that we smaller states may be voted by bigger states with more people. All states should be equal. But Virginia has more people than your state of Delaware. We should have more votes than you. I better stop this argument. Ben Franklin. Him again? Is he still alive? But where is Alexander Hamilton? He should be here. Alexander Hamilton of New York. <coughs> well, well, what about a leader? A country needs a king, doesn't it? No more kings! No more kings! Well, how about a temporary president? Yeah. But who would the country trust to lead them? Why, well, my old general, of course, George Washington. You called? <laughs> Will you be our president, my lord? Yes, I humbly agree. I humbly agree to help my country, but I will not be called a lord. Then what, sir, your royal highness, your supreme majesty? Mr. President will do just fine. Huzzah! This will be a great nation after all.
Um, so first of all, I'm Mrs. Kelly, this is Mrs. Tatro, Mrs. Gajardis, and that was uh, Mr. Gately, and a big shout out and thank you to Mr. Gately. Director, dictator, director, I mean. Um, and he wrote that play and wrote the first song that the first act sang. So, a bit, again, thank you very much. Um, this past week, we have a spelling bee. So, we're going to ask that the students come up um, who are in the spelling bee when their name is called and just stand on the <laughs> so what we did was each class in English language arts had a spelling bee off and then they represented that class at the spelling bee against, it was all the fifth grade and the sixth grade. So congratulations to Angelina Rodolfo. Dana Brito, <laughs> Wayne Parker, <laughs> and Wayne gets another award. He was the first among all the fifth graders. goes to students who participated in the Massachusetts Massachusetts Science Poetry Contest. It was against over a thousand students across the state of Massachusetts and the students, certain students were chosen, their poem was chosen to be sent in for the contest. So I want to recognize those students whose poems were chosen. Emily Roberge. Leah Gagnon. <laughs> Stephen Arnie. Yeah. Ezra Barboza. <laughs> John Harris. <laughs> Cameron Maxim. Rodolfo, Cindy Ullman, Dean Kramer, Brianna Franklin, Grace Brajali. Mackenzie Fernandes. <laughs> Ava Sullivan. <laughs> Natalia Akafi. Aaron Andrews. Danielle Perry. Jordan McCoy, Tyler Susco, Eleanor Allen Murdoch, Jada Rodriguez,
Okay, hi everybody, I'm Mrs. Negretti, the art teacher. And um, I too wanted to recognize a few kids for their excellence in art. Not just their excellence in the art room, but the fact that they come in every day fully prepared. They put 100% effort into everything they do and I really appreciated it. Um, so, without further ado, Tyler Susco. Ava Sullivan. <laughs> Mackenzie Fernandez. <laughs> and Joseph Pearl. subject. So when I call you up, just come and stand up here and get your award. For excellence in ELA, Alex Lambert. For excellence in mathematics, Michael Gibbs. For Excellence in Science, Alex Lambert. And we have three students recognized for social studies. Uh, one first one going to Jordan D. Medeiros. The second excellence for social studies is Sydney Ullman. And the third excellence in social studies is for Alex Lambert. <laughs> for excellence in reading and literacy, Grace Brajoli. <laughs> for excellence in music, Stephen Arney. And for excellence in health, Natalia Apathy. certificates until next week. However, when I call your name, if you would please just stand in your spot. So as of right now, for high honors, we have Corinne DeAngelis. Adriana Dillon. Colby Flanagan. Alex Lambert. Emily Roberge, Jordan D. Medeiros, Grace Bajoli, Ava Sullivan, and Stephen Arney. And um, the high honors that I just called, that was for receiving all A's in all subjects. Okay, 
next I will do honors, that is A's and B's in all subjects. So again, if you can just stand once I call your name. Angelina Rodolfo. <laughs> Mackenzie Fernandes. Ben Smith. Alexandra Bohm. Dana Brito. Leah Gagnon. Michael Gibbs. Sydney Ullman. Ryan Camp. Michael Parker. Kayla Russell. Aaron Andrews. Ezra Barboza. Noah Marriott. Wade Parker. Brooke Pierce. And Tyler Susco. Our last award is our Citizenship Award, and we give it out to students. We have a boy and a girl, and it's for um, a student who has exhibited fairness, caring, respect, trustworthiness, responsibility, and doing the right thing all the time. So it's not necessarily academic, um, although these students both have pretty good grades, too. But it's doing the right thing all the time and bringing that to our community of striking Vikings. Um, the first one goes to Grace Brajal. <laughs> and the next one goes to Aaron Andrews. Our award and play ceremony. If you